This is lesson 4.1, which is inverse variation and the reciprocal function. Our essential question is how are inverse variation and the reciprocal functions related and represented? So our first example is to identify inverse variation. So how do you determine if a relationship represents an inverse variation? Does the table of values represent inverse variation? So the way that we're going to determine this is you're going to multiply the x values and the y values together. And if you, if you get the same constant value for every x times y, then it is inverse variation. So if we look here, 1 times 12 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 3 is 12, 6 times 2 is 12, and 12 times 1 is 12. So this is yes inverse variation. Okay, B, we say 1 times 20 is 20, 2 times 17 is 34, and I can stop right there. So if they're not all going to multiply to the same constant value, then we say no, not inverse variation. Okay, our second example says in an inverse variation, x equals 10 when y equals 3. Write an equation to represent the inverse variation and then find the value of y when x equals negative 6. So our equation that we're going to use is y equals k over x, where k is our constant of variation. So it tells us that x is 10 when y is 3. So we can say 3 equals k over 10, and we can use that to find out what k is equal to. So in this case, we can multiply both sides by 10, so we get that k equals 30. So that means that our equation is actually y equals 30 over x. So that equation models this information, and then it says to find the value of y when x equals negative 6. So we would do... 30 divided by negative 6, and so we get that y would equal negative 5. Okay, this says on a guitar, the string length s varies inversely with the frequency f of its vibrations. The frequency of a 26 inch e string is 329.63 cycles per second. What is the frequency when the string length is 13 inches? Okay, so again, we can write our equation. So it says that S varies inversely with F. So that means we set it up like that. And we need to find the constant of variation. We need to find our K value. So it gives us that when the string length is 26, the frequency is 329.63. So again, we can multiply those together to find k, and we get 8,000, oops, no, we're out of space. Let's try this again. Write it the opposite way. So k is equal to 8,570.38. Okay, so now we can write s equals 8. 570.38 over f. And then it asks us to find the frequency when the string length is 13. So that means we're going to plug 13 in for s. So we would have 13 equals over f. So now if you're solving for f and f is in the denominator, remember the first step is to multiply both sides by f. So then I'd end up with 13f equals 8,570.38, and then we divide by 13. So what we should end up getting, I'm going to write it up here, the frequency would be 659.26, and the units are cycles per second. That is our final answer. 
Okay, so example four is to graph the reciprocal function. So the reciprocal function is the parent function for rational functions, and that's what we're starting in this chapter. Chapter four is all about rational functions. So it's y equals one over x. So a reciprocal function maps all numbers to their reciprocals. So remember, reciprocals are flipping the number. So if you have two, the reciprocal is one half. If you have two thirds, it's three over two. So, and then with reciprocal functions and rational functions in general, we have what's called asymptotes. Asymptote, an asymptote is a line that the graph approaches. Okay, and it also, we can say that it guides the end behavior. Okay, so if you look at this graph over here, this is a graph of our reciprocal function. So you can see the blue dotted lines on x equals 0 and y equals 0. So x equals 0 is our vertical asymptote, and y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote. So that would mean that the domain of this function is all numbers except for 0. So we'd say negative infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity, and our range would be the same because we also do not have a y value at 0. Okay, and to get the graph, you can always, um, you could type it into Desmos, and then remember we have that table feature too. So you can make a table, like you would know that negative 2 maps to negative 1 half, negative 1 to negative 1, 1 to 1, 2 to positive 1 half, so that will give you points that can help you um, sketch the most accurate graph. Okay, and our last example is talking about reciprocal functions and transformations. So with transformations, you can write this, it's 1 over x minus h plus k. So you've done stuff with h and k before with um, polynomial functions and with quadratics, uh, we've looked at h and k. They mean the same thing in this case. So because we have, let's rewrite this here. So that x minus 3 in the denominator means that this is going to be shifted to the right 3. And the plus 2 means it's going to be shifted up 2. So with the reciprocal function, you know your original parent function, if we go back a slide, your asymptotes are at x equals 0 and y equals 0. So now you have to think, if I'm shifting it to the right 3, that's going to give me x equals 3 is my vertical asymptote. And I'm shifting it up 2, that means y equals 2 is my horizontal asymptote. Okay? And then finally, domain in this case, it's going to be all numbers except for my vertical asymptote. So it would be negative infinity to 3 and 3 to infinity. And my range would be all real numbers except for my horizontal asymptote. So it would be negative infinity to 2 and 2 to infinity. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.